What's going on guys, GeoSnow right here, so in today's video we're going to discuss a different topic. Today we're going to discuss about how is a jailbreak being made from the theoretical standpoint and also how you can get involved into this, how you can get into the iOS security research, what you need to, to start learning and what you need to know. Well, we're going to start uh, with the, uh, the fact that the jailbreaks can be in two different types. In fact, there are four by now, but they all boil down to two different categories, being a tethered jailbreak and an untethered jailbreak. From this, uh, there result a, a new category which is untethered or semi-untethered jailbreak or semi-tethered jailbreak. Let me explain a couple of seconds what are these before we start into the, um, the actual talk. So, a uh, tethered jailbreak, everybody knows that a tethered jailbreak requires you to use a program on the computer in order to boot the device. And this was the case of the Red Snow and uh, many other jailbreaks that required you to connect the device to the computer and press boot tethered now in order to boot the uh, device. Also, uh, I think Geek Snow is called, or uh, yeah, uh, Geek Snow is also a uh, jailbreak that requires you to boot the device tethered. But what is an untethered jailbreak? Well, an untethered jailbreak doesn't require that thing. The patching, the uh, kernel patching and the kernel exploits are being set up and are being opened at the boot time on the device automatically, so you do not need to do anything. You just power on the device normally and it gets patched and jailbroken. Well, up until now, there, there were created two more categories, which I described, and there were uh, the semi-tethered and semi-untethered, which require the applications to be installed on the device. Now, this is the case of the Yalu jailbreak that we probably all know, and uh, we have demoed a lot of times here on the channel, how to jailbreak with the Yalu jailbreak, the iOS 10.2 or 10.1.1, but Anybody has an, an idea on how this jailbreak was made, what it needs in order to start jailbreaking? Well, the uh, today's video is actually uh, brought up because of this uh, this uh, Reddit post in here on Reddit jailbreak, created by David Moteza, and he asks, um, or he says, I want to become a jailbreak developer, because we're low on devs and I like finding exploits and hacking. Is there a good place to start? And his question was actually very good. I mean, I have received this question quite a few times, and I also try to explain him in a couple of words in here, in this post, um, how he can start, but I decided to also make a video to address this question because it seems that a lot of people want to get involved into jailbreak development, but there are not enough resources to get you started. So let me let me show you where you can start and how it's being done. At first, in order to start uh, the uh, jailbreak development, you need to be a good reverse engineer. What means reverse engineering? Because we have a playlist here on the channel, but nobody actually asked what reverse engineering means. Well, reverse engineering is the process when you take something that is already created, being it, in this case, a device, and you take it to bits in order to understand how it was created. Reverse engineering. You're not engineering it, you are reversing the engineering behind that device. That's the concept. And and is a broad concept usually used in the entire computer science, which means that you're trying to find out how something works and then break it or whatever, pwn it. Well, uh, in order to understand better this concept and what you need to, to do, you can check out that playlist. But let me tell you what you need to understand if you want to get into the jailbreak development. You need to understand at first how the device works. Let's say you want to um, actually jailbreak the iPhone 7. In order to understand how to jailbreak that device, you need at first to know what an exploit is, because you're going to need that, what a vulnerability is, and if you do not know what an exploit is, you probably do not know what a vulnerability is either. And then you need to understand the basic concepts of the security present on that device. To do that, there are a lot of talks and there are a lot of um, uh, white papers published by Pangu and any others. And I'm going to start with this one. Anything we're going to discuss in this video, I mean the materials in here, for example, Pangu's presentation or Fried Apple Team's presentation, will be linked in the description down below for those of you who are interested. Pangu has done a very, very good job in uh, 2016 with this presentation called Pangu 9 Internals. Well. It contains in here basic ideas or even more advanced ideas on iOS security, on Pango 9 itself, and then the user land exploits. Well, we discussed about the fact there are multiple kind of uh, jailbreaks, but these jailbreaks are different, that's why they're named different. So, in the case of uh, an untethered jailbreak, for example, the uh, code is execution or the KPP or any other protection from the kernel is actually patched at uh, boot time, when the device starts. 
and uh, therefore you do not need to connect the computer. But on the uh, tethered jailbreaks, when you need a computer, usually a bootroom exploit is involved. You need to know the difference between a bootroom exploit and an iBoot exploit, because the bootroom itself is being written to the chip on the device and cannot be updated, cannot be modified by Apple, so finding a bootroom exploit is crucial and cannot be patched. And the iBoot exploits, although somehow very powerful, they can be patched, and uh, if Apple detects one in uh, in the wild, they're going to patch it. But Lime Rain was one of the exploits that were that were used for uh, for making this chillbreaks possible back on the iOS six and back on the iOS uh, even back on the iOS seven and uh, lower, of course. And it required a computer because pooning the uh, bootroom required the exploit to be sent anytime the device has started. Either way, you will be stuck in either recovery mode or you either be in the DFU mode. But we're talking about much um, newer chillbreaks in here. And Pangu, as I said, has done a very good job in making this presentation about their Pangu utilities. So um, you can read in here a lot of things that they have uh, they have written about the iOS security itself. They explain very well how the sandboxing works and sandboxing uh, in a nutshell, sandboxing means that your application starts in its own, um, in its own container and it can only make modifications to that container. So if I install, for example, Twitter application on my device, but I also install an application created by me to be a malicious application and I want to steal data saved by Twitter application, I cannot do that unless I'm jailbroken and my, uh, my maliciously crafted application has uh, somehow a very big power uh, among the uh, system applications. Well, why? Because imagine, imagine the applications being installed in separate containers that are not interconnected. So my application can only make modifications to its container and it cannot access um, Twitter applications container so I cannot read its data. This is uh, the uh, sandboxing in a nutshell, but this requires to be patched or escaped if you want to make a jailbreak because your application has to have access to the system in order to write either um, the data from the jailbreak. And this is the case of the yellow jailbreak when it unpacks a tar file containing Cydia, containing dialibs, containing various binaries that are required by the jailbreak. Unless you are um, you are in a um, sandbox escaped status, you cannot write those files to the system, which would be a uh, problem. Then you have uh, exploit mitigations, which are ASLR deep, which means uh, data execution prevention and so on. Data protection, for example, my application can save uh, various uh, various user data on the on the system, on the device, but th that would be protected with different access keys or uh, encrypted in various formats and so on. So um, that is data protection in a nutshell. A lot of information can be found exactly on Apple. I know it sounds very strange, but if you want to start jailbreaking, you first need to understand how to create applications because you will need to understand how the, how the system works uh, in a nutshell. For example, if I know how to make an application for the uh, iOS for uh, an Apple device, then I would probably be uh, very aware of different concepts. For example, data protection, sandboxing, um, the code signing, which all need to be patched in a jailbreak. And uh, a lot of information can be found in the on the developer portal on Apple. Again, I'm going to link this in the description. For example, we have an article in here about code signing, which explains very well, and keep in, keep in mind, this is an explanation from Apple themselves on how the code sign works in a nutshell. So you have the limitations, you have the, um, the different um, structures being used and so on. Understanding this helps you to understand how to bypass them and you probably need to know that a jailbreak is a uh, is actually a collection of multiple bypasses on multiple uh, types of system uh, protections. Pango explains every way, everything in here, for example, the hypervisor, the secure enclave processor, um, which is the SAP, probably you heard of SEP or SAP uh, before, it handles the touch ID and the fingerprint. Uh, and many other things. The hypervisor, which is uh, again part, a very important part of the um, 
of, of the system. And you have here a schematic published by Pangu. This is why I, I love these talks and I love these presentations. These are usually presentations that have been either at Black Hat or at Roxconn or Mosec and so on. Different hacker hackers conferences that uh, Pangu has attended to and they have presented this in front of a lot of people. You can access this for free and you will be able to understand very well how a jailbreak is made. Well, you have in here, okay, we, we discussed about Pangu itself, but you have the um, the jailbreak itself that does what? Well, when we say jailbreak, usually people uh, people tend to understand uh, CDI and so on. Uh, Cydia is not the only thing that is uh, that comes with a jailbreak. Usually you're trying to disable security mechanisms and you need to understand those security mechanisms and again those talks are very very well structured and you will be able to understand them perfectly and then you need to make sure that whatever you're trying to run has enough permissions to do so. For example if I want to open Cydia, Cydia will require root access because it has to write or and read various files and then it requires sandbox escaping and it requires code sign escape, escaping and so on. And um, a lot of people do not know where to address these things and where to learn them. But Fried Apple team has made a very good jailbreak DIY or do-it-yourself presentation uh, this year at in March at the Black Hat uh, conference. And uh, they have explained very well different concepts like secure boot chain, the mandatory code signing, sandboxing and so on. So if you really want to get into the jailbreak development, here they explain anything including what we talked in here, for example, the difference between tethered and untethered, how to attack various things, what you need to attack in the kernel, and so on. I recommend you to start learning a programming language. Being able to write code in C and C++ and even in assembly, in ARM assembly, is very important if you want to get into jailbreak development. And then this presentation is definitely very important because it explains you uh, what you need to bypass and how you need to do that and what you need to um, to actually disable. For example, you have in here bypassing the uh, kernel uh, ASLR, which means uh, other space layout randomization. And um, yeah, it's very, very important to read these pages. By the way, uh, if you if you understand these things and if you got to the point where you are able to understand to comprehend what these means You can go on the iPhone wiki and learn about any topic you want Definitely you can check here various uh, past exploits and see how they were implemented You can learn about various components like the basement like the SEP and so on and uh, the code signing and the patching and so on but then you need to go into the actual practice. Learning to jailbreak requires you to actually practice and requires you to actually do what you learn. And for that, I have created the Miriam application, which is uh, looking like this. I have presented the app in the past and you have a couple of tutorials about it in this playlist that is going to be down below as well. This application has a couple of protections. For example, jailbreak detection, login bypass, circumvent activation, modify and update data, more to come. and. This application simply lets you hack it, but in order to hack it, you need to actually be very proficient on Hopper Disassembler and patching itself. So try to learn using this application or damn vulnerable app and so on. This is actually how you will learn to jailbreak in a nutshell. Once you know how to pwn an application, how to modify an application, everything starts chaining together. You're going to learn on how to exploit different vulnerabilities like like stack overflows and buffer overflows and heap overflows and so on and then you start chaining them together. This is actually it guys, I really hope you understood how this works. Uh, unfortunately I cannot talk more about this, uh, of course a lot of things would have been um, remaining to be said but the video is getting a little bit uh, too long and yeah. But I'm going to link everything in the description, any um, material, any description that I have um, uh, used in this video, for example, Pangu stocks and so on, so that you can start uh, learning how to, how you can jailbreak or how you can get involved into jailbreak development. Till the next time, I'm Geosnow, peace out.